Hey, today I'm going to be reviewing Good Omens, The Nice and Accurate Prophecies of Agnes Netto, Witch by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. I haven't read anything previously by uh, Terry Pratchett. I know he's really popular for his Discworld series, which I've been meaning to read forever. Um, I have read Stardust by Neil Gaiman, and I really liked it when I read it, but it was in ninth grade, so I don't really remember it, and I'm not really that familiar with Neil Gaiman's writing style. Um, my boyfriend, he's a big Neil Gaiman fan, and so he loaned me the book, and um, so I'm probably going to be reading a lot of Neil Gaiman in the future, um, just so I can understand why everybody loves him and like all these movies and all this stuff. But um, the book is told through the perspectives of a, a lot of different narrators who they don't really seem that connected like at all in the beginning of the book, but as the book draws nearer and nearer to the end you kind of start to see why and then like at the very end it's just like the kind of all come together and it all makes sense but um it centers around an angel and a demon the demon's name is Crowley and the angel is Aziraphale I don't know how to pronounce it <laughs> so um they're both jaded with their respective size neither is like really completely hell or heaven or whatever uh, the both of their masters have them on earth carrying out their bidding there and both Crowley and Aziraphale um, have come to like earth Crowley likes to wear um, sunglasses and like cause all this trouble but it's like not like malicious trouble it's just like kind of a humorous kind of mm, being mean to people I guess like causing traffic jams and stuff like that not like killing people um and Aziraphale, the angel, he, um, likes old books and tea and just seems, I don't know, kind of like a, a stereotypical old man, I guess, from England, maybe. Um, but, uh, the plot is that, um, Crowley is given the task of switching the Antichrist out with a human baby. And Crowley doesn't really want the apocalypse to happen, so he, he does it, but he kind of does it half-heartedly, and he doesn't switch the Antichrist out with the right baby, and so the Antichrist has a totally normal upbringing. His name's Adam. He's just this little kid who, he's in the gang, he's like the ringleader, and their nemesis is the, uh, the Johnsonites, and so they're, you know, they're just kids. And he's, he has a perspective on the book as well. And, um, the, um, the apocalypse, as it draws near, um, Adam starts to cause stuff to happen, like Atlantis is rising, and, um, the rainforest, and, like, all this other stuff is just going crazy, because he's gotten into these um, like, New Age magazines, um, through one of the other side characters, Anathema Device, who is actually the descendant of Agnes Nutter, and let me tell you a little bit about Agnes. Agnes is, was, or she was this, like, crazy witch from forever ago who wrote down everything that was going to happen in the future. Um, the problem is that her book, which was passed on to all of her descendants, isn't really understandable at all, so you can take one passage to mean something completely different, and so Anathema Device is trying to figure it all out. Another side character is Shadwell. He is a Witchfinder General who doesn't really do anything, it seems like, and he's very inept and spends most of his time cursing about the the harlot across the hall, Madame Tracy, who does seances and stuff like that. And um, there's also Newt Pulsifier, who starts working for Shadwell, but he's pretty much just looking in the newspaper for stuff that looks like it could be due to witches. Um, so it kind of, um, Aziraphale and Crowley figure out that Crowley didn't um, actually deliver the Antichrist to the parents he was supposed to, and so they're searching throughout the book for the Antichrist, and they decide to try to prevent the apocalypse from happening because neither one wanted to, um, 
and then it kind of comes together at the end where all the characters meet each other like I said earlier um, so that's what it's about pretty much and um, what I liked was one of the themes of ineffability that was very prevalent here I think it's Crowley who speculates at one point that humans don't need demons or um, the devil to torture each other because humans can just be like so cruel to each other they don't need the influence of a bad entity or whatever but humans can also be kinder than even an angel so um he's saying that just humans can be really bad or really good or just somewhere in between and that um i guess there's so much more per, um complex than heaven or hell and i really like that and i thought it was true and this this theme is like mirrored in a lot of different places throughout the book um, especially the uh, four horsemen who also have um, a little perspectives throughout the book famine is just this guy who's like busy selling people these weight loss things that just starve them and they're slowly dying he has all these fast food chains and like then there's pollution and war and I thought they were all um, very very good to their titles um, and so I really like that and it was a little bit surprising to find a theme like that in a in a book as I guess irreverent as Good Omens because it is pretty irreverent and um, it is funny but it's more to the dark humor side I suppose and um, it's making fun of a lot of stuff but it does definitely have a message so I would recommend it if you are okay with this type of humor and um, I think that's all that I have to say about Good Omens. I'm going to be reviewing um, Chuck Palahniuk's book, Doomed. Or, Damned. Yeah, Doomed is a sequel. I haven't read that one yet. So, um, watch out for that. And I have a book haul coming too. And thank you for watching.